Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Tease Time. I'm TJ. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, today we're in Percy Van here. We're going to continue with making things look nice. I have exhaust fans that I need to install into the cabinets. So we have our cooling effect in our cabinets where our electronics are. So we don't have heat being an issue, uh, especially since now that we have our cabinet doors on. Uh, so I went ahead and I decided to go with uh, AC Affinity. That's what's inside all of these boxes you have right here. Uh, this is the controller. It's a four zone controller so that we can set the temperature uh, at each different cabinet. So that way, if one is hotter than the other, the only one that needs it will turn on. Kind of help save power. Uh, so this is one zone right here where our inverter, our solar charge controller, all this stuff is in here. So that's one zone. We have another zone down below for our batteries. Uh, another zone right here for our batteries also. And then we have another zone up here for our electronic cabinet. The exhaust out into the closet right there. You can see that. Yeah. Uh, so right now, uh, if you're doing an install of this, uh, you do need to go ahead and uh, make holes. This is kind of bright. Make holes. So when you get the kits, uh, you open the box. It'll have a fan, of course. You'll have your hardware. Uh, you have a plug. Uh, instructions and there is a template well there was a template I think I already took that out uh, but it comes with a template for you to cut out the holes for your uh, fans and for your uh, controller right here uh, so I went ahead and already cut everything out like while I was assembling or building the cabinets I just kind of thought ahead uh, except for that hole I had to cut that at a later date <laughs> but it's in there uh, we didn't mess up the paint uh, so that's part of the install and also you have to take in consideration the size of your cabinet uh, so uh, decide on your fans wisely and uh, you should be good if you go on their website the AC affinity uh, website uh, they give you kind of like a sizing chart to kind of give you like a, a guesstimate of like what you would need to cool your cabinets and uh, just think of like the high heat high demand stuff that's why I have a bigger fan that's gonna be in this uh, cabinet right here it's just there's a lot of heat especially uh, when you have your solar going when the Sun is going and then when you have uh, this going with the AC on like that produces a lot of heat also and then also I decided to think like when I wanted to put my holes uh, for the flow of heat so uh, when you go in right here uh, this is where the cool there we come in but it will go all the way across all these electronics it exit down in the corner down here right there and then it also for uh heat wise inside the cabinets why well, i decided to start at that side uh because the solar charge controller is the hottest thing that will be inside the cabinet so all the cool all the like the cool air coming in and the hot is going to be at the far end away from like everything so everything's not going to like a breeze of hot air from the solar charge controller like if i came from the opposite end like if i decide to go here and exhaust that way it'll have to get all that heat from that solar charge controller over the things that are usually cooler uh so just be mindful of your position of that and you should be good but uh it's pretty easy uh to install i do need to reverse a fan so i'm going to show you how to do that uh just because uh when you get your uh, fans oh and there goes the template right there but when you get your fans, they're all going the same way. You could pay a little extra to have them reverse it for you, or you can do it yourself. So I'm gonna reverse the fan. It's just a matter of uh, undoing the screws and just flipping the fan itself over, and that's gonna be reversing it. And then you also comes with these uh, AC adapters right here if you wanna just do that to test it. So you plug this in. You take a fan. You plug it in the USB AC adapter. Plug this in, and then you don't need an actual controller. I just wanted to do that so that way it could just control itself. I have to go to each switch, and you just turn it from low, medium, high. So that's high. And then all of the fans that I have, they're set to blow out. So you have to be mindful of that because I want the one fan to suck in and the one to blow out. So just be mindful of that. And it's a good way to test and make sure you have it right. But it should, you should need to test it if you're flipping the whole fan over. Unless you just kind of get confused and lose track of where you are when you're flipping it. 
But uh, yeah, let's get into flipping one over, reversing the flow of air travel, and we'll get to installing, and then also a bunch of USB cable lengths of wire because you have to adapt or like each zone could control multiple fans. Uh, but to make it reach all the way over to like where I have them, I have to use the extensions to reverse fan to fan. Uh, so zone one will be on one set of fans with the adapter to reach. And I did already wire going into uh, like the cabinets going through the ceiling and stuff for this zone right here. Uh, this zone I had to cut to make that fit. So I'm gonna have to cut and splice into that. Uh, but you probably won't need to do that. So I don't know if I'm gonna record that or not. Probably not. Uh, just because uh, for basic install, you'll just, just plug and play. Cut your holes. Make sure you have your cabinet size correctly for the fans that you're using. And reverse the fans if need be so that way they're flowing and they're not fighting against each other. You want it to suck in and then blow out. So that's the plan. And reverse fan time and get these installed. All right, and that's reverse. I threw the zip tie on there just because like we have to pull it through the clamp. You have to be careful as you can see like right there. Uh, use like a flathead screwdriver to open the little plastic tab so you don't damage the wire. I'm gonna plug it in right now, just to double check. But uh, that's how you reverse, you just flip the fan like so. And then plug it in to test. Make sure wires and everything aren't rubbing or are not rubbing. So there we go. We got it reversed. I'm gonna check it on high so you can really feel the flow. Cool. So that's done for that. Uh, continue that process for all your zones. Uh, so I have a total of four zones. So I need four fans to do uh, what that one does and it's just reversing the flow. Uh, so that way it sucks in the cold and just be mindful uh that you install the fans in the right ones so like right now you just put that to the side so i know that one is one that uh sucks in and then like i said before uh all of the fans they come already as uh blowing uh so i uh, just change them over and then get it mounted so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna change all the fans i need to get changed over over and then we'll get into uh mounting them into the cabinets and uh running the wires and uh playing with the control panel just so we can set our temperatures for each zone uh so be mindful of even the zones too i do have them labeled uh they're uh down below but we'll mainly focus on this top one uh this is where most of the cooling is uh required and needed everything else is just because like in case uh the batteries don't produce a lot of heat they're pretty much usually at room temperature and uh for the electronic cabinet over here uh that's to be determined 
but this is the main focus is this one. So we're gonna get this one situated, get that up and running, and we're gonna show you, or I'm gonna show you uh, how the fans are going, how they're flowing, and if they actually work uh, based off of temperature. So uh, I'll probably use like a heat gun uh, just to get the temperature probe up to heat for it to kick in. But uh, yeah, let me get everything switched over, we'll be back. All right, so I have all the other fans installed except for the fan right here that goes at the end cap uh, along with the control panel uh, right here. Uh, so we're gonna get those installed. I did lose uh, the screws <laughs> that mount that. Uh, that's kind of like the only downfall when you take stuff out to uh, test fit. You gotta make sure you don't lose your stuff. Uh, but like, luckily enough, uh, that should be snug enough to hold it in place until I could get some hardware for that. I do have the hardware for the fan. Uh, so we're gonna get that in. And I do have like these cables right here, these USB uh, extension cables, because uh, it might not reach all the way to the end. Uh, we shall see. Uh, if it reaches to the end, I won't use the extension cables, but I had to use those for uh, like the bottom. Uh, fans under the bench to make that reach uh, all the other ones I didn't need to use like we have this one right here going up to the closet area and then also right here in the back that shoots up to the bottom uh, I didn't need an extension for those either uh, I just used the extensions like behind the walls where I ran everything like already going to where the control panel will live uh, so there's like extensions throughout the wall and then I did use uh, like shrink tubing around like the connectors, like the hidden ones, just so like stuff didn't vibrate and come loose. Uh, so those are good. Uh, but right now we're just gonna get the fan in. And then like I said before, like once you have your holes cut, hopefully you cut them to the correct size, not too big, not too small, just right. Uh, stick your wires through, like show fan goes in and this is also a snug fit so that's that and then take your uh, control panel take off the protective film that goes in like so and then let me get those uh, screws right here installed on the fan. And like I said, I don't have the screws for those. I don't know where they're at, uh, but that's not gonna go anywhere. And I'll get hardware for that at a later date. Uh, so it still will work, uh, won't be an issue. I just don't have the hardware. We need to get that. But uh, let me get that going. And then I'll show you how I have the wires. I'll show you how I have the wires connected from uh, the one fan to the other one. Uh, it's just a plug and play USB uh, male to female. Uh, it's as simple as that, but then behind uh, the control panel, we'll get into our zones. On the back, it goes A, B, C, D for zones, and I have it zoned, I believe this is uh, one, uh, it's two, three, and then zone four, or A, B, C, and then D. Uh, so that's how I have the zones, and you could set the temperature for each cabinet, and then we'll try to get a test going with, I got my heat gun. Uh, we'll get like a test going just to see uh, the fans activate when they reach like a temperature. So uh, we'll get into that. But let me get those screws into that. I'll run the wires uh, from the fan to the fan. And then I'll show you what's behind the control panel. And bada boom, bada bing. It's in, it's installed, it's finished. This is what I have. <laughs> we have it in with missing screws, of course. Uh, the fans, everything are mounted. I did do the wiring. I went ahead. And this is behind the panel. So as I said before, you have banks. Uh, there's A, B, C, and D. Uh, so four, three, two, one is how I have it labeled. Uh, so four is over on the opposite side in the top cabinet. Uh, three is down below with the batteries. Two is down below with the batteries also. And zone one, which I have right here, is uh, for this main cabinet. So this is what I'm gonna use along with the heat gun to activate that. Uh, but that's the battery uh, or the AC adapter. I have to plug this in. And when I plug this in, we should have power. And everything should go accordingly as long as I wired everything correctly. So, uh, actually, probably could just leave that as is. And plug it in. The power is down below. The love below. So power, and then the adapter, 
plugged in. So we have power. Uh, so let's see. So it says A, so this should be zone one. So that's how to switch between zones. Okay, so that's how you could just turn it straight on. Let's make sure. actually should turn this off all right off alarm and you could do auto so you can change the temperature all the way up to uh, see what the max temperature will go up to I think that said 130. Oh, actually, we don't even need the the heat gun because uh, it goes as it goes as high as 140 and as low as 32. So as we hit 32, it activates itself. It says probe is at 65. That's pretty cool. Like it lets you know exactly what the probe is. So let's go all the way to 66. It should shut off. And yes, and you could adjust the alarm. This is the exact same way. So that's successful. Or actually, let me go through and test all the zones since uh, we just need to be at 67. So this is B. Fan is activated. Let's go to C. Fan is activated. And you could adjust the fan speeds. Like if it reaches a temperature, I'm just gonna have it. So that's good and then let's go zone D that's over here and yes it works uh, so install is pretty easy uh, setup seems pretty easy uh, just scroll through the menu uh, so the menu at the bottom, you could either just manually turn it on, or you can even do auto, smart. So you go through menus, auto, smart, on, off, and then the alarm. So the alarm is where you could go to adjust for your alarm. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to go through and just check the temperature ratings, and also with your probe position it's always good to put your probe uh near a component like i'll probably have it mid cabinet like right in there somewhere uh just so you could adjust uh or not adjust but just how to like where the, the heat uh supply is coming from like from the inverter or the solar charge controller if you want to cool that mainly put it closer to that uh the solar charge controller is probably going to be the thing that gets the hottest so I don't know if I want to put the probe like next to that and then just have the temperature uh, based off of what the solar charge controller is doing. Uh, the inverter itself doesn't really get too hot. It has its own little cooling fan uh, installed. With it. Well, yeah, its own little cooling fan. So uh, the main thing is just the solar charge controller is the main heat provider in this cabinet. That thing right there is the hot. I put an aluminum block behind it just to kind of help uh, isolate the heat from the wood and also to kind of dissipate some heat off of the back. Uh, there are like little cooling fins and stuff like that. Uh, but just the fans, is like the cabinet doors are closed. They just help with circulation. But yeah, 
we're getting there or actually we're already here we're just improving on here so uh until the next video uh well thank you for watching thank you for liking subscribing commenting and if you made it to uh if you even started watching this from the very 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 beginning when i had the little sketchy videos videos probably still a little sketchy but anyways i appreciate you so until next week um yeah just keep improving on improving <laughs> that's all i gotta say peace dj Thank you.